but in law by showing that it conflicts with something somewhere along the system. Not directly with your case for that matter. The same in halacha. Every principle and every premise is connected with every other premise. And therefore that's the whole discussion in the Gemara. Where, where in my arguing with somebody else, or refuting, or substantiating, I will show that this becomes inconsistent with this, or becomes inconsistent with that. And that's how you refute the other side. Not by simply, zap, bash you over the head and say, this is where it is. Can't be done to it. You have to show that. And then, I have to show my own position as well. So it is interpreted. What bothers me is what bothers me are the xeres, which are what? very extreme. Takanas, uh, There's takanas and xeres, which are very extreme. Xeres, like, xeres, 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 and takanas is a completely different very, different category. That's, that's what xeres and takanas is not part of Torah Right. That's xeres exactly. and takanas is simply the, the same as you have it in secular law, Lahavto. Okay. That every municipality, every city, every state makes its own laws which they feel necessary for this right. particular environment. So there are various times they have, they, they have this authority, and here they, these are also subject to certain laws. That if it's an exerer that was accepted by the majority of the people, then it becomes valid. If it's an exerer which was not accepted by the majority of the people in practice, or it's something which became practically impossible to observe, it became void of itself. But once it has become part of the system, then it's part of the system. That's that's my problem. So you mean the consensus of rabbis? That's my problem. Why is that your problem? When I, when I talk about hijack, I don't mean that that, that they fed us the harsh I mean that's true, one hundred percent. Everything in Gemara is true. But when the rabbanim decide, like a portion of the rabbanim decide, you can't eat chicken with cheese. You can't eat chicken. Not, not, they not, say because it's not, the benefit not, of the people. Not, why, why should not, people not, say a, that? not a portion of them. They have reasons for that. Why should people say they that? got they got the authority. For that, from the law itself. It's not fair, though. It's not fair. <laughs> <to be honest. laughs> they have, they have the authority. If somebody violates the law of the Rabbon or the Kohen the Rabbon, they are violating two pieces in the Torah. One is the Sosur to not deviate from that which they tell you. This is an edition, and only this an can make the universe the Kohen say. And another one, Kfi Asher Yeruchot Tase, a mitzvah is say and a mitzvah is not to say. That's why when it comes to Purim, you make a book on the Megillah, what? Hashem in the Shonu, the Mitzvah Sof, the Tzivonu, al Mikro Megillah. Where did God command you to bring the Megillah? He commands us to, to, to listen to Rabban. Exactly. But, so they can tell us here, so therefore, and why should this time again? So therefore, by... Uh, by obeying what they say, what the Sanhedrin says, which was given this sanction by God Himself. Yeah. So therefore, this is God's law. God makes it but could it be that the Sanhedrin is very extreme and it's for a generation? Could it, okay, for extreme example. You right? are looking, you are looking, you are looking at this as if the Sanhedrin would be a bunch of masochists, sadists, and masochists <laughs> to, make, to make life as miserable as possible when every Xeo, when every Takano, was to preserve Yiddishkeit. Without these Zeus, without these yes. Takonis, there would be no Yiddishkeit. Yes, they have a good motive. Absolutely. That's it. They definitely have a good motive. They want to preserve. Yeah. So, so who so says that so they should preserve it? So, so, so now you're sure, sure, and now you're smart as they are. I'm not smart. They just take away our food. And, and, you, and you know, and you know, <laughs> um, yes. in the Monday morning quarterback, <laughs> you now know uh, that somehow Judaism would have been just as good off if that Zeus that the Takonis would not have been made. Yes. But that so I, I have rational, just like they do. <laughs> Huh? I have rationale just like these. How do, no, but guess time. what? Guess what? All the opponents today can't touch any one of these things. Yeah, but okay, because they're making the all the time. Okay, it's true. Nobody, nobody makes it's zeros all the time. Who can eat sour meat? Who can eat zeros all the time? We can't eat sour meat. It's just a pen. It's a zero. No, it's a it's a zero within the zero. You can't eat sour meat. You can't eat sour meat. Yeah. You have a the you have a problem with the problem the problem with the 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 you can make mom shy next door, your house is next door to yours, but it's across the borderline to municipality. It, you, you, you couldn't care less about it. 
So it is a local decision where it is your decision to have appointed these people as your rabbis, as your leadership. Right. I'm, these these performances can be revoked. They're not the same as that of the Senate. I'm just, I'm like, right. no, they're not the same as the Senate. Was that rabbi? You don't need to consent to rabbi or not. No. In those times, in those times, who was the Senate? Whoever is the old, whoever is the best in the other time. All you need is one rabbi to revoke the Senate. If the rabbi, the functioning rabbi, he made the Senate, and the more functioning rabbi can know that the Senate. Someone wanted to ask a different question, uh, just a totally different topic. We're going back to the pure Kupchus and the Abish Derby and Mashkiach on the world. I'm, I'll phrase the question this way. The Abish created the world for a purpose, right? And if he had that purpose, that purpose is going to happen. So, who said we have free choice? If the Abishur wants something to happen, it's going to end up that way. So then we're Free choice relates to one thing and one thing only, to your moral behavior. It does not relate to anything else. You have no choice whether to be born with blue eyes or brown eyes, six feet or four feet, uh, whether you're going to be rich or poor, all these things you have no choice over. The only thing you have choice over is for do's and don'ts that are given to you. Uh, but what type of... We're coming along, we're saying Abishur hey, wanted a dear but if he do, who's going to get it? It's going to happen. That, that, that's the other side. But that is not you, it's your freedom of choice. What type of purpose would you say? What's the purpose, what's the purpose of the world? For God? I have no idea. <laughs> that's, that's the answer. What? And it's irrelevant to me. Uh, it's irrelevant. It's, it's totally irrelevant. Because he's here right now, what is it going to make a difference? It's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. I only no. I don't have. I don't have to know the purpose of the world. All I have to know is what do I have to do. That's all that's relevant. Understand? What God creates, already sees. How you're going to live your whole life. The whole world already. It's already happening. What's the point of creating the world? What does he gain? What does he gain? Ask him. It's for us. For us? Yeah. He did it. I don't know what answer. All the answers that you have been given, or are being given, or will be given, every one of them, meaningless. Because ultimately, as the medieval proverb has it, Ilu Yodatif or Yisif. If I were to know and understand him, I would be him. Since I'm not him, so therefore I have no clue what it's all about. So the Sava Kodesh Pochali is the Diabetan Toyrim, it's a nice therefore. But I haven't got a clue what it means. Like the like the Mesrich Magid said. Well, what the Mesrich Magid said. The Sava Kodesh Pochal, I have a tie with the Toki Kasha. If somebody desires something, you, you can't ask why does he desire it. A desire is a desire, it's just there. So, so it's never, it, it's not, I understand. You don't understand. That's the whole problem. No, you can't ask a question on the tag. I can do it right. And you can't ask a question, period. You can't, but theoretically, No, theoretically, it's also not a question. It means that my mind would have to be on the same level as God's mind. You want to understand God. There's no way you can even approximate it, even come close to it, no, not even scratch the surface. It's so far beyond. So therefore all you have is just basically, this is what I have to do, this is what the, what the reality is. Freedom of choice in the moral matters of do's and don'ts, not in physical reactions or spontaneous reactions, as you want to argue. There you don't have freedom of choice. But in so far that there are moral implications, and that, there you have freedom of choice. Not the That's the only thing you have to account for. Rabbi, one last question. Rabbi, one question. It says that. Uh, Rabbi, one question. It says that. Uh, God's exalted, uh, your Chazak was rather to you, uh, a strong outstretched arm, right? You have certain rabbinic sources that say it was literally a hand of God, and then you have certain rabbinic, no, it's metaphoric, right? There's not one that says literally. Yeah, there is. There is. There is. Nothing. I, re I forget, the, I forget his nonsense. name, but I know, I know there is. I know nonsense. There is. Absolute nonsense. It's one of the Yudgimli Kohen. That what? 
Except God has no hands, God has no feet, God has no body, God has no shape. It's metaphoric, it's keel. It's, uh, it's anthropomorphism. Right. Simply describing God in human terms that so you can understand. But not that there is a hand of God. So my question is, okay, right. so you say there is a thought. But my question is, does God have a right hand, God has a left hand, and all that? It's, it's nonsense. I'll ask that question anyway. It's merely a form of communication. To get across that God is aware, God is involved. So that's a, a, a parable, a metaphor. Right. So my, okay, I'm going to ask the question anyway, even though you said that there is no source that says it was literally an outstretched arm. Okay, some people say, yeah, it was literally an outstretched arm. So my question is, like, there's other, you know, the, whether it's a bobble, or you just was trying, whatever. Were they literal or were they metaphoric? Literal. Definitely literal. <laughs> How could three million people wander through the Sinai Peninsula, which takes a, a Bedouin tribe less than a week to cross? They've been they were there for forty years. Oh, that was a miracle. If they would have kept, if they would have kept walking, you have a point. What was that? If they would have kept walking, you have a point. They were not walking. They were walking. They were stopping. No, first of all, they were told to, to take a detour. Even then, it shouldn't take even one year. They could have entered this in six months. They could have entered this in three months. If I knew, no, if, 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 if they had week. gone there, yeah. Herod's yeah. would have gone there in a week. Right. Even if they, the other way, it would have taken them three months. They could have entered this in three months. Okay. They would have entered right at the time that Meraglim was sent. But then, because of Meraglim, God said the punishment, you have to stay here for years. Okay. Not that they were stuck there for years. They have to stay there for years. That's the punishment. So in some places they stayed there for a couple of weeks, some places they stayed years. So 38 years they did not wander at all. 38 years they were simply stuck in various places. There were very, very few. There were only 42 voyages, only 42 trips. Over 40 years, 42 global trips. Which means some places they stayed longer, some places they stayed shorter. So my question is like this. There are remnants or like Israelite groups spread out throughout Africa. Do you think... That that was because of mountains of a 40 year journey that some, some, you know, stayed behind and whatever, they formed their own community in Southern Africa or Central Africa. Uh, who says that? Uh, the, the, what's it called? The Lemba? I don't know if you ever heard of the Lemba. Yeah. It's like a black African tribe. Oh. They, but they, pra- they have Hebrew pra- Israelite practices. That could be from, from the uh, 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 Shvaki. That they want to claim, some claim that they're the same. No, no, some of those Israelite groups claim that they're not there for the Tremont tribes, that they're from, you know, from the 40 year trek from the desert. Right, so they, it's, it's, it's like lots of claims. So they, everybody uh, claims they are descendants of no, that. No, they have a thousand over a thousand year tradition. So, that's well, who says so? They say so. They say so. Do they have documents to prove it? <laughs> all the facts. No, all the facts. No, all the facts. Pass from generation to generation. And a lot of African tribes practice that. Where they have, they're able to memorize the whole family, the whole genealogy. But the ten tribes are dispersed already, uh, what is it, 17 or uh, 1600 years ago? Right. What about 2600 years ago? Right. So? So they have a thousand year tradition. Who says it's not from the ten tribes? Well, it says it's from the Or simply, or, or simply, by contact, simply for that matter, the Queen of Sheba coming back there from uh, from Africa and bringing back some tradition. And then the thing after all, you develop a whole. Uh, whole uh, history. What happened in the desert? So, how is it the written for the That's it? Really? Sure. Yeah. Uh, the 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 didn't happen then? For all the course of 40 years, So, so. When were the Jews obligated to do all this? Huh? When they were told by Russia? That's right. I So, not necessarily the Lord of the on the day on, only for the day on. So Shabbos happened in Baro, right? Yeah. So that is no Shabbos. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Now that I've read that the Judaism was influenced yeah. by the Zoroastrian. No? Yeah. What do you say about that? I wish. They said it was a Jewish community.
Jews don't like to hear that. No, the owners of Puff is not one of the argument. The what? The owners of Puff is not one of the argument. I don't have to respond to any argument. Tell me the reason why you would say that. Tell me the reason why you would say that. You know, Zoroastrians came before Judaism. They believed in a concept, they were the first ones to believe in one God. The concept of one God. For me, it wasn't the first one. Adam was before Zoroastrians. He also believed in one God. No, he also believed in one God. But as an organized religion. Do I need an organized religion to one God? Asian and Egyptian Judaism claims to be the first ones. He says so. He says so. Yeah. Well, Judaism states that I'm saying so. There are a lot of speakers that say Judaism introduced one God in the world. Because of the monotheism. Thank <laughs> you.